Good afternoon, everybody. We'll give just a minute more for a few more people to pile in here and we'll get started on our Nashville, Tennessee presentation. Okay, everybody, welcome. Um, we've got quite a few of you in here today, and uh, we're going to be we're we're just doing some deep dives on some markets, uh, ones that I particularly like. Um, I'm getting into most of these markets just because when we start talking about recession and what's coming to quite potentially our uh, commercial market. We want to make sure that we're positioned in markets that make sense. And one of the things that I uh, love about what's going on in Nashville uh, is not just the economics of it, but also the growth that's happening in there and the future of the city. So let's take a look at it. They've had significant growth over the last five years. They've got a population of over 2 million people in Tennessee. Um, it's kind of a geographical hub and uh, has a lot of large corporations in there. Of course, there's fantastic nightlife. The music scene is pretty great. Um, and then if you wanna slow it down a little bit, you can go to the Grand Old Opry and hang out with the old people. Uh, but it's got a low cost of living and it tends to be a well-educated workforce. Um, this is another thing that I thought uh, an interesting statistic that over half the US population lives within a 650 miles uh, of Nashville. So depending on how you drive, uh, you could be, uh, you could visit anybody about half the U.S. in about an eight-hour, nine-hour period. So um, as far as things to do, what's going on, we always like to look at that because people don't just move to a place for a job anymore. A lot of times you'll see them move for work, but you'll also see them move for uh, amenity. I know that in uh, here in Boise, Idaho, uh, where I'm currently at, we have a lot of people that move into our market for amenity. And uh, when you look at what Nashville has to offer, um, it's got a pretty great um, amenity list, including um, a national park that sees over 14 million visitors uh, a, a year. So plenty of outdoor recreation, I've been to Nashville, it's beautiful. Uh, the countryside is great, lots of history there. So um, a lot of things to do, which also check boxes for us when we're, when we're looking to underwrite a market. Um, Nashville is the hub of the fastest growing region in the nation. It's, um, it's got 75% of the US market is within a two hour flight. There's 12 million people within a three hour drive. Um, and the trucking distance, which as we see fuel creep back up to uh, prices we haven't seen since uh, what, 2014, uh, we're starting to see people pay attention to how far things have to truck. So we're seeing that be a, a great, great indicators for the market because it, it bodes well for the thing that everybody has to have in order to pay your rent, and that's jobs. Um, if you look at the growth by region, um, Tennessee is part of the South and you can see the South is outperforming every other region uh, currently um, as far as net domestic migration. And um, <clears throat> that is a pretty good thing. They're seeing over 100,000 people uh, move into their markets on an annualized basis, which is um, a great indicator because new people, you know, there's never a there's never a huge surplus in a market because it's just not built. Unless a lot of people have moved away recently, you're not seeing uh, markets uh, 
well, maybe outside of San Francisco downtown right now, but you're not seeing markets that are missing a lot uh, of housing. So when you see this, especially for developers like myself, we look at that and we go, wow, if they've got that much in net migration on an annualized basis, then we can see where there's a lot of room for us to be able to come in and provide what we do, and that's new housing, so new new industrial buildings. Nashville's got a population uh, the, in the metro area of just over 2 million. It is one of the fastest growing cities in America uh, and is projected to grow by 56% by the year 2060. So in, in the next 30 years, uh, 27 years, you're going to see another million people move into the area. And when you look at that and just do it by the numbers, you've got 2 million people trying to create uh, 30% more housing than, or 40% more housing than currently exists in the next 30 years. That is a pretty large task. That is, uh, that is definitely going to keep that area busy and, and well supplied with labor jobs and construction jobs for the next several years for sure. And those are the kind of things that when we break down a market, we want to look at and we want to understand. We want people to be able to identify what we're doing in the area and why. Um, you know, construction jobs are awesome, but as we saw in 2008, 9, and 10, as that market crashed with the GFC, we began to see that construction jobs alone weren't enough to keep a market alive. We saw that in, in Las Vegas, they have entertainment and they have construction. That's really kind of their two main industries. And when that market crashed in 2008, Vegas was hurt incredibly bad because they didn't have the additional industries. You go right down the road to Phoenix. Phoenix did not get hurt near as badly. It did suffer greatly, but it didn't get hurt near as badly because there was a lot of other jobs with tech and with office and with a lot of other things that just Vegas didn't have, national companies and things like that. So we really like to look at this and go, what's the growth? Why is the growth? And if we look at the historical rates of growth in 2022, they added 81,000 people to the state of Tennessee. Um, and that is a pretty good jump from where 21 was. You look at the lows that happened in 2013 and 2010, uh, you know, in, in the, you know, looks like about 13, 14,000 people, you see a substantial uptick in the last couple of years. And it has a lot to do with the economy that they're putting on politics that they have, the education system that they've got, uh, and just being an all around great, uh, great city to live in. So Sumner County uh, is a one of the bigger areas there. Robertson County is also part of it, but they are growing substantially. You can see there's uh, most of the counties, Troutsdale County, I mean, that statistically, you know, 47%, but it went from 7,000 to 11,000 people. So uh, technically, I maybe they just had a family reunion. I don't know. But uh, when you're looking at Sumner and Robertson County, um, they are putting on some substantial growth, and those are uh, the, the counties that represent the area around Nashville. But 4% of the Nashville population moved there from out of state in the last 12 months. Um, that says a lot about the area. It says a lot about the, uh, the economy, the environment. Uh, you know, how the city functions, what you've got coming in. And so you're starting to see a lot of new product. And one of the things that I know about when new product comes into a market, you can never build new product for what old product was. So there's always a gap between what new product costs and what, um, uh, what old product is selling for. And even though there's a tight supply and demand chain in there between new product or for the old product, you'll see that as new product comes online, it substantially pushes prices on uh, the, the existing homes that are in the area and the existing product in the area. It also does a lot to change rents because when someone comes in, if you got an apartment complex that was built in the 90s, um, that is probably going to trade even at a cap rate, probably 15 to 18% less than a newly built apartment community. Based on that, what someone has to get for rents to build a new apartment community is going to be 15 to 18% higher than the existing rents in the area. When that happens, you'll see rents on the uh, 
you know, nineties product, the, the, the eighties product that are going to balloon because they're going to be slightly less, but they're going to take advantage of that growth. So when you see this kind of growth, it's going to force new product. When you see new product, it's going to force higher prices, higher prices are a trickle down effect, right? So when you look at all of that, then you have to figure out where they're coming from, where are they being employed and uh, what's going on here. But you know, the thing that I love about what you're looking at here, when you look at the counties surrounding uh, Nashville, um, you see some of the major names on here, Nissan, North America, Gap, uh, Electrolux Home Products. For those guys on the call that they make vacuum cleaners, okay? Uh, just something you might wanna know. Uh, but you know, you've got, um, you know, HCA Healthcare is a big, big employer. But the other thing, if you look at the bottom half of this uh, chart or, or uh, whatever it is, D decal, you'll see that Rutherford, Sumner, Wilson, and Williams County are all growing at over 20%, Robert or Montgomery County as well, and as well as Murray. So these guys are growing with a population uh, existing of 85%. They've come up, come up to 104,000 people in Murray County. Statistically, that would be about 60% of those people that moved in would be employed. Um, the others being minors and those over 65. So if I just do some quick math, it looks like we've got about 15,000 new jobs that were created in Murray County. Um, and you know, you've got uh, Murray Regional Medical Center, uh, and you look at some of the larger uh, counties with Williamson or Rutherford, uh, they brought in, Rutherford brought in 60,000 people. Those 60,000 people, you're going to bring in 40,000 new employees for Nissan North America, Amazon, in, uh, Ingram Group. Those are, those are pretty substantial numbers, and those people aren't moving there without the promise of employment and or employment nailed down depending on the industry they're in. So when I definitely look at this, this kind of stuff, I get really excited about why is an area growing like that? And I was recently there uh, a couple, three weeks ago, meeting with a group of fellow entrepreneurs. And, you know, you really saw where uh, obviously Broadway, where the music scene is, was pretty packed. But if you got out into the countryside, and I did, I went and saw a friend of mine in Millersville, where we're doing a project. And when you see the countryside and you see all the growth that's going on, new Amazon centers, new freeway on ramps, all of this kind of stuff, especially freeway stuff. When you see in freeway work, that's stuff that has been planned for a while. And the people in the know, the county commissioners, the highway district, they understand that they've got to improve the commute because there's more people coming. And when you look at the kind of numbers, like it said earlier, You've got over a million people going to move in in the next 27 years. That's a substantial amount of people. Speaking of Millersville, uh, Millersville is uh, about 20 minutes drive north from downtown Nashville. Um, when you combine the populations of um, Robertson and Sumner County, you got about 275,000 people in the surrounding area there. But it's close enough to the city, it's an easy commute. And there's a lot of commuters that come from 20, 30 minutes out. Uh, as you can see, there's uh, the, the whole area here is pretty spread out. But it all comes in in the spider web to the center where uh, downtown Nashville is. Um, due to the average commute time, uh, people within the metro area uh, think that it's less of a drive uh, to Millersville. Uh, the Nashville metro area is considered a catchment area for companies in Millersville. Um, you've got a median age at 37, uh, working age population, like I said, about 63%. Largest people group is 20 to 29. Uh, second largest is 30 to 39. So you've got a very young population. Um, and in doing that, you're able, you've got a good workforce there. $40,000 a year is not set in any um, records as far as everything goes. Uh, but um, the income per household is 72. So you're seeing that most are dual income houses uh, or dual income households, which, you know, 72,000 a year, we quickly take that, we break that by a third, and we can see that they can comfortably pay the rents on a new apartment complex. So that kind of stuff uh, is pretty exciting. It's also slightly higher than the national average. 
67% uh, of uh, houses are owner occupied. 72% of those are single family units. So there's not a lot of apartments or townhome products. And one would look at that and go, well, maybe I don't like that. Maybe that's not a good sign. But uh, typically when you're seeing large in migrations of people like Nashville is experiencing currently, you're seeing a lot of people come from larger cities where they're used to the kind of things that maybe Millersville, maybe uh, Nashville doesn't really have a lot of, but it's what's available. And so people are going to gravitate toward that. 91% of the people graduated high school. Um, I think that's kind of an amazing thing for Tennessee, but 40% have a bachelor's degree or higher. So you're dealing with a fairly educated population as well, which would be, uh, you know, a lot of the commuters are doctors, lawyers, people like that that want to be out and away. When you look at the industry um, within Nashville, you know, I think it's interesting to see that hospitality is not that far behind uh, job growth wise or job size wise uh, versus healthcare. There's about 100,000 people more working in healthcare. Look at the difference in annual economic impact. Uh, I mean, I know insurance is expensive, but a $67 billion economy that employs 362,000 uh, people versus a 259,000 job population uh, stimulating the economy, economy by about $7.5 billion. The other one I look at is the advanced manufacturing. Now, a lot of that has to do with Nissan being in there uh, because they are producing, you know, with their automated lines and things like that. They're producing vehicles which have a higher dollar ticket number on them. But you've got $69 billion being created uh, in the, uh, in mostly in the automotive space, but in the Nashville area. And then you've got the music and entertainment industry, 80,000 jobs. But if you've been in Nashville, there's a lot of unemployed singers everywhere you go. Uh, and they're probably not in this $15 billion economic impact. So when you look at this, I mean, just these four top industries, uh, you're looking at about $150 billion in economic impact on an annualized basis um, out of about, count it up here, looks like a just under, uh, yeah, just under a million people. So uh, pretty good economy, pretty good growth. As far as growth goes, Las Vegas is the only one that's, uh, Top in the charts at 6.3. You've got Dallas, Austin, Fort Worth, Orlando, all the typical ones that you normally hear about. But it was surprising to me to see Houston and Miami actually have less job growth, which, you know, 4.9% job growth in Houston is pretty substantial. Um, there's a lot going on in Houston. So when you look at that, as far as Nashville goes, um, that says a lot as far as who's moving in the area, what's going to be available to people um, and employment is going to be the driver because most of these people, as we saw in the previous slides, are not of retirement age. So they're coming because there are jobs there. Um, there are good uh, paying jobs there uh, from the, uh, the, the slide that we saw earlier about $72,000 per household income uh, being higher than the national average. So when you consider all those things, um, you've got a really strong market. Here's the industries that are going. Uh, leisure and hospitality, information, wholesale trade, mining and logging. I wouldn't have thought that, but they throw construction in there and then it starts to make sense. Um, but all the way down here at the bottom is the retail trade. So your manufacturing, your retail, your education and health services at the bottom of the list there. But we're still seeing robust job growth because you're looking at 13% growth in leisure and hospitality. 11% uh, in information. So that would be online jobs, uh, things like that. I, I think they might be counting Amazon in there. If not, they're going to definitely be counting them in the service production uh, field down here, which is still 5.6%. So when you look at the inbound traffic, let me scroll back up here. Um, not that one. Let's see, I thought I had a slide here earlier that talked about the percentage of growth. Um, well, you got 22% growth in the county in 10 years uh, in some areas, but you've got 5% um, 5 5 to 
13% job growth in certain sectors. So all of these things look really, really good. And they look like they're not going to be slowing down because these people are coming from out of state. So they're moving from areas like New York, New Jersey, Chicago, um, you know, and, and Wisconsin and things like that. So they're moving for lifestyle. They're moving for uh, improvement in their, uh, in their job situation, or they're moving for um, just a better climate. So we're seeing a lot of that happen throughout the South. Uh, they're starting to come into their own in a lot of ways. But, you know, you can see here, re information has taken off. It's only been really prevalent in the market. Obviously, everything took a hit during COVID. Everybody knows what this is. 2020 is the epicenter of the COVID market. But when you look at the, at the job growth that's happened, you know, uh, let's take retail trade here. It's been up and down, but it's it, between 5 and 10% on an annual growth rate, but you take information that went from non-existent or a negative uh, it, in COVID, and you're still, you're pushing over 20% growth in a two year period of time. Those are phenomenal statistics and phenomenal fundamentals that really uh, make someone like myself look really hard at this market. It's why we really like the project we're doing there in Millersville, because we're able to come into a market that is vibrant, that is growing, if you're taking a uh, information job growth chart, or even uh, the black one here is uh, leisure and hospitality, these are both solid double digits. So if we go into recession and you lose three, four points uh, on a national average, that can be catastrophic because you only had 5% growth and now you only have 2% job growth, or maybe you only had 4% job growth. And now you're really getting close to that red line. But this one, you can see that even if you had that economy slow way down, the nation slows down, uh, people stop moving, things start hap stop happening. You're going to see a lot of people still find good jobs um, that uh, people are liking, people are understanding, and there's still good job growth. When you have that kind of scarcity, obviously those numbers will push up, uh, and as they as they continue to stack people in there, you're going to see wage increases in that area as well all really excellent signs for an economy. 21 different countries have invested uh, direct investment in the city of Nashville. Obviously, Sony Music is really kind of no surprise, uh, but T-Mobile, Snyder Electric, uh, United States Cold Storage are some of the others. But you've got a lot of people uh, that, are, that are investing from the outside world. And when I look at some of the guys, uh, some of the things that happen on Wall Street, there's a lot of it that I don't understand, but I, but I really can seriously follow the money. And when foreign investors, uh, foreign direct investments are happening in an area, you've got plants being built, you've got jobs being created. That's the kind of stuff that you really need to pay attention to because those are global leaders that pick the location that they place their staff for reasons that um, that they know and they understand and they look at demographics and they've done a lot of work and a lot of research globally to figure out what's going to fit best for them. So uh, the labor force, most importantly, service providing 87% of the labor force, financial activities is 6.9. Uh, professional and business services are 17.5%, uh, education and health, goods and uh, goods producing, so you've got a wide variety. You're not, you know, I would be a little concerned if my government, uh, you know, number would represent what you probably see in uh, Washington, D.C. in the 20s, high 20s. Uh, but you've got a good diversity here. The service providing, that's going to cover everything from your gas station attendant, car wash guy, your pizza delivery guy, um, you know, a lot of that uh, fast food area, um, guys that work at a tire shop, all those kinds of things are going to go in there. So that's the biggest category, but it's also the biggest catch-all. So when you look at that, you've got a total population of uh, just over 2 million, uh, and you've got almost 50% uh, in the labor force. 68% uh, is the labor force participation rate. Um, that's healthy. That's not getting to be an aged society. Uh, where you've got a lot of retirees, you know, Phoenix struggles with that. Um, you know, Tucson st struggles with that, where they've got a lot of the labor force that 
is retiring. And those, those, um, that demographic does not tend to spend as much money per capita per person than, uh, than the, uh, the youngers or the younger workforce people that know that, Hey, we're making money. We can spend money, things like that. And so they're also not expanding households. They're downsizing. They're doing all kinds of things that aren't really awesome indicators for a market. So when you see markets like this and you see the growth that's happening uh, and you see the labor force is strong at almost 70%, um, those are again, excellent, excellent indicators for people that want to um, look at areas that are growing and going to continue to grow. Let's talk about uh, commuters. Obviously, more people outbound in, in Cheatham County, but Davison has got a lot of inbound commuters. Um, you're looking at Robertson County and Sumner County. You know, the interesting thing here is there's not a lot of inbound commuters. I mean, there's less inbound commuters in, in Robertson than there are outbound. And what that means is that epicenter isn't so dense that it's forced everybody out into other counties, uh, you still have a lot of room for growth in the infill areas, in the margins that will continue to densify that and increase that. So these numbers are pretty good. When I look at counties like Williamson, that's pretty lopsided. You know, Davidson is definitely lopsided. That's definitely a commuter community. Commuter communities are not excellent for apartments. Um, because if people are going to live in apartments, they're going to be, they're going to be willing to tolerate smaller spaces, higher density to be closer to work. If they're outbound, uh, or if they're inbound on the commute, it usually means that they're larger parcels, larger homes, family areas. So when I look at these kind of numbers, um, they tell me a lot about what's happening in that individual market and how people are living and what they're doing and what their expectations are. Here's our wage analysis. If you look at um, the US jobs, we've got 12 million um, accommodation and food service jobs. We've got 93,000 of them in Nashville and we've got a higher national wage or a higher Nashville wage than the national wage. Um, and when you look at that, that's true for almost every category here, except for architects or ar agricultural forestry and fishing and hunting. This one is definitely uh, substantially off. It's probably, uh, because everybody and their cousin uh, is in the fishing and hunting business. But when you look at arts and entertainment and recreation, 67,000 versus 42,000, uh, the construction is uh, looks like about 3% higher, uh, and that's a supply and demand issue. When you're looking at, um, let's see, grab another one down here, retail trade, slightly higher, you know, um, rent, real estate, slightly higher. So, those are the kind of things that really speak to a vibrant market and a, and a strong market. Um, then we get to the housing prices. Uh, and this is where some people are going to see that there's value. Uh, some people are going to see that there's uh, reason to live there and how you could figure out how to exist on $50,000. But in the Nashville metro area, uh, you're up 5.5% from March of 2020. Uh, but in Millersville, where we're getting ready to build that project, you're up 13% from April of 22. So you're seeing substantial housing price increase, but you're also seeing, you know, this was this, this difference between Nashville and Millersville was what we used to call in Idaho, the drive till you qualify. Just keep driving farther out until the land gets cheap enough that you can afford that house. Uh, and then you just trade the difference in the payment for gas and drive to work. So housing prices is reasonable. Um, construction spending, as we can see in the city, it's up. In the state, it's up. Uh, but in the U.S., it's kind of gone flat on us. So when you look at where this is heading, it's all been trending down for sure. We've seen a substantial drop from two to one and a half uh, on the uh, construction spending index. But versus 2013, we're still way above the line on 2013. And uh, you're seeing that it is continuing to pick up while the national economy stays flat. Again, testimony to the growth, right? Construction spending by asset class. Um, if you look at it, the um, infrastructure is a really strong number uh, as well as the residential. So when you're looking at those two, you've got infrastructure means that people are moving in, they need sewers, they need water, 
Uh, they need power, they need streets, they need uh, new bridges, new roads, all of that is a big number and um, should definitely be a part of that. Um, and when you're looking at that, how that has grown overall, you can see that they did have, they did peak here in 21. You're seeing that step off in 22, a little bit lower in 23, but you're starting to see the projections pick back up for 24. Again, you can't, you can't build roads fast enough when people are moving in, right? Let's talk about the multifamily. Uh, demand is still scheduled to outstrip supply with a steady rent growth expected over the next five years. Occupancy rates are forecast to remain incredibly high uh, through 2028. Looking at this occupancy chart, um, I can see here that um, uh, they're 94% occupied in 28. They're projecting that. But here in 22, they were 96% occupied. In 23, they're projecting 95% occupancy. So they're definitely higher than the national average. Uh, and when you look at that, that means, I mean, any of us that are in apartments, we really want 3 to 4% vacancy. That means we're threading the needle. We're getting as much as possible out of our rents. Uh, and we still have vacancies, so we still have the opportunity to continue to raise rents, continue to make our net operating income grow with that forced appreciation. So all of these things are very, very strong uh, when it comes to uh, supply, demand, jobs. All of that seems to be there. When you look at the multifamily absorption, they're throwing out in 21, they threw out... Uh, uh, 10,000 units that got absorbed, 6,000 of that was new supply. Uh, when you look at the first quarter of 23, the market was 4,400 units absorbed, um, and there was 10,000 in new supply coming on. So you can see as everybody kept ramping up, we had 8,000 come on in um, the end of, or in 2022. We only had 3,200 of those absorbed. When you look at the forecast, they're saying that you're going to have a seven to eight percent growth on the national or on the uh, on on the Nashville front as far as new apartments coming online. You've got 12, 14, eight. You've got a lot of uh, growth going on there that is um, definitely going to bring a lot of supply into the market, uh, which is going to ease. You're going to see prices ease a little bit to that. You're, but you can see here, new supply is kind of peaking. And then in 24, 25, you're going to see it kind of ease off down into more reasonable uh, levels. But, you know, 23 is going to have plenty of units. 24 is going to have plenty of units, which is going to speak to the, to the demand and the price point. So going into this project that we're doing, uh, we're not getting in a hurry, but we'll have that online probably second quarter of 24, right as this is starting to, to uh, ease out, but they're also talking about those units all being absorbed. You're talking about 11,000 units coming into the market and 13,000 being absorbed in 2023. So you're not out of balance too badly with that. So that's always a positive indicator. North Nashville, uh, this is the uh, asking rents. We're at 2,300 uh, bucks a foot, $1.93. Those of you that are on the West Coast, uh, you know who you are. You're thinking, wow, I can get down to $1.93 for rents. How in the world does that happen? But when you look at some of the counties around, you can see, you know, Central Nashville, obviously the highest, North Nashville, uh, a little bit better than that, Franklin and Brentwood, you know, in the in the $1.60 range. But these are numbers that are indicative of uh, a very healthy market. When you look at the Nashville, uh, Davidson, uh, I'm not even going to attempt to say it, Murfreesboro, Pennsylvania, <laughs> Tennessee, uh, you're starting to see that it, it's getting over $2. And when you start to see rents like that, that's the kind of stuff that really pencils very, very well for new multifamily, because you've got certain things you can do, certain things you can't. Here's just a look at an apartment complex, fairly simple deal, not very extravagant, just kind of there. Uh, your average three-story walk-up, and you're running anywhere from $1,600 a month, clear up to $1,900, $2,000 a month for 1,200 square feet. Um, the, Ridge, the Ridge Apartments is in Goodlitzville. It's right outside of where we're at for our apartment complex that we're building there. 
Um, you're doing 600 square feet for 1100 bucks. And this is what you get. Now I know what you're thinking. My goodness. How do they keep everybody out of that pool? I have no idea, but with a kitchen like that, maybe that's where they're keeping everybody. So when you look at these, I mean, there's nothing special here. Rents are high. Uh, cash flow will be good. The, uh, the, the vintage apartments I actually toured this one. Um, and it's fairly new, even though a lot of it was done with, um, I guess some dated concepts and everything, but they're still getting over $2,000, uh, in rents on an, on an 1100 square foot apartment. <clears throat> so it's uh it's a very encouraging market that way, because I can see where our new product fits, where we're building stuff in Boise. Uh, we're building stuff that is running in that same price range. And we're having to do them a little bit more elaborately than, than this complex was. So, it's um, it's got a lot going for it. They're also throwing in a new two billion dollar stadium that seats sixty thousand people. Uh, so we've got things going on there. Peabody Union. Uh, this is under construction. I saw it. It's it's quite the impressive project. It will be uh, something to contend with. I don't know what they're going to do with their two hundred fifty thousand feet of Class A office space as we see that uh, market continue to spiral but you've got food, retail, and beverage, and uh, 350 luxury apartments. So you're looking at East Nashville. Um, you're talking about the growth that's happening there. There's a 15-acre greenway of mixed-use office, industrial, retail, food, and beverage that's uh, under construction currently and looks to be situated in a great part of the city. Another one is Albion, uh, Nashville. They're doing a 21-story mixed-use tower, 415 units that should be done shortly. Um, and 30,000 square feet of office. The Alcove Apartments, here we go again, 356 units. This did not look cheap to build, but I think that um, it definitely looks nice and uh, it definitely shows up in the city. So in conclusion, guys, it's uh, pretty simple. Nashville is experiencing unprecedented growth and we like growth when we like thinking about investments. Most everybody's coming in from out of state, so you're not seeing them move from one side to the other. You're also, you're also nationally recognized city with lots to do. I guarantee you there will be plenty of eat and drink and music if you go there. Record levels of investments have, uh, yet they've still maintained a low cost of living. And that's because they have, a, they have a very vibrant, strong workforce that can get it turned out. So Nashville is the hub uh, with easy access to over half the country's population. And we conclude that it is a great place to invest. So guys, uh, hopefully that gave you guys some insight as to what's going on in Nashville and why that might be something you want to set your sights on. If you guys don't want to do that, but you want to look at investments in Nashville, well, you can definitely get a hold of us, uh, shannonrobnet.com, go to the contact us, uh, make an appointment. Let's talk about how you can be involved in the Nashville market with us in a great syndication that we're bringing on there of 60 unit apartment complex. Also, if you guys want to click the QR code, it'll help you sign up for our June 27th at 2 p.m. for the Raleigh-Durham market. And we're going to have uh, some insight there, looking at another robust market in the southeast and uh, drawing some similarities between Raleigh uh, and Nashville and Charlotte, because uh, they're all within about a couple hours of each other. So, um, guys, that concludes it. Appreciate you tuning in. And um, we'll stick around, but um, if you need something, you can contact Christy uh, in our investor relations department. You can contact me. Just go to our website, shannonrobnet.com. I want to thank you guys all for coming.